Hi, my name is Natalie Panic. Uh, we're here in the Challenger Learning Center at the Ontario Science Center, and I am a mission system engineer at MDA's Robotics and Automation Division. So basically, I play with space robots for a living. Comparing humans and robots going into outer space, I think the easiest way to think about it is what a human has to do on a daily basis. I do a lot of long distance hiking in remote locations. Before I undertake a big hike like that, we do a lot of upfront research, making sure we have all the supplies we need, our transportation to get us there. And then when you're in the elements, you're kind of on your own. Just like a Mars mission, all of the crew members would be by themselves on another planet. So when you wake up in the morning, you have to eat, which means you need food. So if we were sending humans to Mars, for example, we'd have to have a way for them to grow their own food and get food to eat for the entire mission. We need to drink water, so again, the same thing. They'd have to have a way to make water or take lots of water, which is really hard because you have a limited mass when you travel through space on a spacecraft. Um, you'd need shelter. You wake up in the morning in a bed in a home astronauts or crew members who would be traveling to Mars would need some sort of habitat or living space, whereas a rover doesn't need all of those things. So in any engineering or design project, you have a number of phases. So you'd start off with concept development, which is brainstorming, coming up with creative ideas about what your design could look like, doing the math and the analysis to make sure that your design meets the requirements, things that your end user needs the design to do. So you design for the launch environment, you design for the transit to Mars, and then you design for all of the surface operations on Mars. And then once you've done all the analysis, you'd go on to actually building it and integrating it into actual physical hardware and then testing it to prove it would work out. What I think is really cool about working on an engineering project is actually the teamwork that's involved in it. So it's not just me working on this rover, it's a really dynamic group of uh, other men and women who are engineers also solving the problems. And I mean, we're building stuff to go to space and that's obviously hard so things do go wrong. An example would be the wheels that we're building. Uh, once you go through some testing and uh, initial breadboarding, which is building initial models you can play with, you find things that don't work on it or that have broken and so you kind of go back to the drawing board, you bounce ideas off of your team and try to restructure what you've come up with to keep progressing the design and get you to the end because you don't want to do all the analysis and then build it thinking it's going to work and have something go wrong on the launch pad or while wow, it's en route to Mars. You want to know up front that it's going to work. Definitely want to go space traveling. <laughs> For me, it's always been about breaking down a challenge into more accessible steps. So I had this one big challenge of wanting to travel to space and I've kind of taken it one step at a time, first going into engineering, studying mechanical engineering, and from there, really learning the value of putting yourself outside of your comfort zone and doing things that might be scary or intimidating, but where you'll really learn a lot. An example of that for me was joining a solar-powered car team in university. So I knew nothing about building cars or solar technology, and in the end, we ended up building a car that could race at 100 kilometers per hour on highways, and we drove it from Texas back to Calgary. Real-world projects are hard, and you often fail and you'll make mistakes and what really matters is how you make decisions based on that failure to keep your teams or your groups that you're working with going forward and learning from those mistakes to make an even better product in the end. It's so important to study and learn from your textbooks, absolutely, but I think opportunities to actually build and make and experiment and tinker are incredibly valuable.